Hi guys, so for today's video, I wanted to talk to you about the Synology Mail uh, plus server package. Um, of course, when you have your NAS, maybe what you want to do is, your, is to have your own mail server at home so you, you can be completely free and uh, take care yourself of the security, for example, and everything. So, um, unfortunately, I hear a lot of people know, oh, I'm going to want to do this and that with my NAS for the mail system and everything, but actually, it's not that easy for multiple reasons. Um, so, I'm going to explain uh, what are the... Um, the problems that you can have today if you have your own uh, mail server at home so this is more for home customers and um, what is what what so what are the problems that you will find and I will also show you an alternative uh, to work on uh, that will be easier to manage and still have a pretty good level of security okay so first of all let's go uh, back to the basics so when you would like to uh, so this was in French, sorry. So when you would like to take the, um, to, you know, to download your mail, you're going to be able to use the POP3 protocol on the unencrypted port 110 and the encrypted port 995, if you want. The 995 is an implicit encryption protocol, which means that if you are going to use this port, you will need to talk uh, in an encrypted manner, otherwise it will not work. If you would like to synchronize your mail, you have to use the 143 as unencrypted and the 993 as an implicit encrypted encryption protocol. Then you've got the relay protocol. This is usually between mail servers. It is not used anymore between, between your client and your server. This is forbidden today, or almost forbidden and uh, usually it is not uh, encrypted and you've got the mail submission protocols so you have the smtps at uh, 465 which is a implicit encryption protocol and you've got the 587 which is unencrypted but can be encrypted by issuing the smart tls command so there is a big difference between the two because the 465 you need to talk encrypt, in, in, encrypted. For the 587, it is going to open a, a connection which is unencrypted and then it will issue the smart TLS command to encrypt your credentials and your mail itself before delivering it. So there is a problem with this uh, protocol because when there is some mass surveillance, there is a hacker a, uh, your ISP or your government, if if they want, they can just strip the smart TLS command when they see it and then they can uh, look at your uh, mail and also at your credentials. So they can harvest credentials. So that's uh, the, the big problem with the, with the protocol. Uh, fortunately, there is some mitigation features where in your mail client, but not all of them, that you can require encryption, okay? This is very complicated actually because on some mail clients, it's not really clear what it's going to do. You can, um, you can have no encryption, you can ask for encryption, or you can require encryption, okay? So if you require encryption, um, well, you will have to have an encryption, encryption channel, otherwise the connection will, uh, will just stop. And you can also inform your own mail server that you would like to have a encryption protocol, encrypted protocol only. So this is uh, uh, how it works. Now, why can't you use your own mail server at home? So the first reason is that the ISPs they are you know they are trying to um, they have a war against spam. So the first uh, measure is to um, is to block the SMTP traffic over the port 25 between you know uh, from your internet from your uh, home. So they are going to block it. Okay, and. Uh, so this is a big problem if you don't have this protocol working, so you will not be able to send email to another another server. So you are blocked. This is the first thing. This can be unblocked by maybe using a professional, uh, how do you call this, um, a professional subscription for your internet 
uh, with probably so you will be authorized to use the port 25 and also uh, you can have a, a fixed ip which is better to have of course now also what you need to do in terms of security you have to have a reverse dns at your isp for this ip address because when you're going to send some mail the the destination server can check if for example for the domain uh, test.com with this ip he's going to check if this ip goes back to um, uh, test.com if it goes back to you know your um, ip address um, uh, dot your isp for example they are going they might consider this as spam and block it now there are also some other security features like spf so the mail server at the, the at the end he's going to verify that um, the mail that he received is from an author unauthorized domain or ip or server for the dkim it is going to um, have a it, it's going to put a digital signature on your mail and the recipient is going to check your digital signature uh, so you need a, uh, a pair of uh, public of keys sorry a public and private key for this and for the DMARC is going just to instruct the destination that if you have a, an error on the SPF or the KIM or both, uh, well, what to do with the mail, okay? And uh, so there's another thing is that the MTA STS, um, this is just to ensure that uh, the, um, the different mail servers, when they are communicating, they are over an encrypted channel. But this is out of your control anyway for this one. Okay, so this is the problems that you will have. So this is what I've done at home for me. Um, so it's easier to manage and maintain. So I have my NAS as usual. Okay. I have my security box as usual. I have my, let's say my router like this up. And you have, and you have the web. Okay. So now i have at home i have all my emails on my nas that's for sure that's good and also so for this to work i had to have a subscription at a, a mail provider which also has my uh, you know my uh, my domain and there we go it's called ovh and all my mails are coming from here okay so when someone sends me an email it goes to ovh and then my uh, NAS is going to take it from OVH and it's going to delete it, okay? So uh, here you have on the internet, you have OVH, which is also talking to other uh, MX servers. So some other MTAs they are called. So OVH is an MTA here. This is an MTA, mail transmission agent. And uh, they are going to talk on the port 25 or maybe on a, the encrypted version if it's configured, okay? And uh, so what happens is that my NAS is going to, uh, I'm going to try to do this in blue, okay? So my NAS is going to say, okay, I would like to take the mail, it goes here, then of course it goes here, and then it goes here at OVH, and it's using the pop, 3s protocol okay so i'm going to take my emails from ovh and when i have them i'm going to delete them from ovh so it does not say on the cloud on the internet and everything this is how i'm going to get them when someone send an email to me now what happens um i'm going to 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 draw here my phone okay my beautiful phone and how i am going to um to retrieve the email okay so this is by contacting directly my nas over the imap s protocol so the encrypted version i'm going to take back all my emails i'm going to, to synchronize them now what is going to happen when i would like to send an email okay when i'm going to send an email when i am on the internet so not at home there is a, a difference with my uh, architecture but anyway so I'm going to see it goes to the router, then it goes to my special box, which uh, it's going to check if I am authorized to connect to the SMTPS. So it's a SMTPS proxy. So I don't allow direct connections to my NAS. So security first. Uh, 
well actually I don't even, it does not even need to go to the NAS but I've just used a proxy so it stays there it does not need to go all the way to the NAS actually you don't need to and then the UTM is going to forward it to the router of course and then to the OVH server and this is going to be uh, through the SMTPS 587 protocol 587 port okay so this is how it's going um, to work and with this architecture everything is secured I'm using IMAP S I'm using SMTPS to send email and to send it to my um, to my mail provider so I, and when I would like to retrieve them it's with pop 3s so everything here is secured now what I don't know actually is what is happening uh, what is happening strange colors <laughs> what is happening in here you know this is a big question mark it's uh, really is my information encrypted or not so anyway between those two MTAs uh, the email can be read but no credentials because credentials are not exchanged so at least my uh, username and password is still protected so that's a good thing um, and this is how I've done everything so like this I don't need to care if my internet or NAS goes down at least uh, if someone sends me an email it will stay at my provider uh, and it, it will not be deleted by the uh, sender um, because I think that after 48 hours or 72 hours if it cannot reach the destination server it's just discards uh, the mail so there is uh, this is how I've done it and it works pretty well uh, the most security I could do uh, with what I had and I just wanted to show you at the end if I can only if I can uh, it might not work well just let me see for what what's what's happening actually okay Oops. sorry guys So I've done all the Wireshark uh, things so I can see what is you know happening with all those protocols what is being exchanged and if it's secure or not so everything I'm, I'm telling you I was able to test uh, at, at home okay so now as my uh, provider what is this okay I'm going to try to speak to him on the port 587 I don't know if my security system blocks it okay so as you can see here I am connected to their server so that that's great you can see okay now let's see what's happening what is going to happen if I go to um, the same server on the port 25 So it, and as you see now it is not the same server actually my ISP is uh, is uh, how to say he's blocking the connection and I am redirected to their system now if I try to send an email uh, first of all they will uh, they will find out my username and password and the destination so they can harvest this information and if I try to send an email it will um, I will have I saw on the Wireshark capture a response telling me that I am not allowed to use 25 because of spamming reasons spam reasons and I need to use the 587 or 465 port okay so uh, I hope this video has been informative for you and if you have any questions just feel free to ask bye bye